I just bought a used 10 inch Dobsonian telescope for $700. It's in pristine condition. I know what you're thinking. Sula, you could have gotten a brand new one for the same price. Not like this one. It came with a whole suitcase of irresistible goodies that I'll tell you about. A completely unused Orion carry bag. Still has the tag on it. She never used it. And the telescope is perfectly collimated and she made all kinds of upgrades to it that I'm going to tell you about that you can make to your telescope. The first upgrade I want to talk about is the focuser. Most Dobsonians come with a single speed Crayford focuser and this woman that owned this previously upgraded the focuser with a moonlight dual speed Crayford focuser. It's very smooth and it has very fine focus in addition to the coarse focus. Unfortunately, Moonlight no longer makes this focuser. They only make electronic focusers for Newtonian reflectors, which wouldn't make any sense on a Dobsonian. But GSO makes a dual speed Crayford focuser for Newtonian reflectors, and there might be other ones as well. And so that is a nice upgrade to give you fine focus. Just be aware that if you do decide to upgrade your standard focuser that came with your Dobsonian, that what you want is a two inch focuser with the one and a quarter adapter. So you can use both two inch and one and a quarter eyepieces. And be aware that if you get a GSO two inch dual speed focuser, that it may not come with a base. And even if you find the base, the base may have different holes than the ones that your standard focuser use. So you may have to drill additional holes. So just something to think about if you decide to replace your standard focuser with a two inch dual speed focuser. Some people consider having a dual speed focuser essential. I personally don't, I'm fine with a single speed focuser. But what I do consider an essential upgrade is to make finding objects with your Dobsonian as simple as possible because unless you have a go-to telescope, you're gonna have to find everything yourself. So you need to make it as easy as possible. I think that this telescope came standard with a red dot finder like this. And they're great. I recommend red dot finders because it's really easy to find that first star but once you get that first star in there, you're gonna need something that magnifies in order to hone in on the object you're seeking. And for that, you need a magnifying finder scope. So what this woman did to her telescope was uh, she added a tell rad, and a tell rad is similar to a red dot finder. It doesn't magnify, but it has concentric rings, and it's very easy to find um, brighter objects with a tail rad. And then on the dovetail that probably held the red dot finder, or maybe it came with this, I'm not sure, is a correct image 9 by 50 finder scope. So it magnifies and it's a correct image, which I personally really like because it looks exactly how the sky looks in the finder scope as opposed to your Dobsonian which uses mirrors and therefore will have an inverted image in the eyepiece. But to find things, I like this guy to look how it really looks when you look up in the magnifying finder scope. So the tell rad gets you on that first star in your star hop and then your correct image finder scope will hopefully get you the rest of the way. And this is a really nice uh, finder scope. Orion uh, is out of business. I actually own one. <laughs> Too. It's a 9 by 50 but other companies make them. I know for sure Aperture makes a correct image finder scope, and I think that's an essential upgrade if your telescope came with a, a rect image finder scope 
add a tail rat or add a red dot finder because that will really help you to locate objects and you can get a tail rad like this they're not very expensive and they just tape on to the telescope and they run off a nine volt battery i think now if that's not possible another thing you can do is you can get or <laughs> you used to be able to get these from orion they're dual dovetails and you put this where the dovetail that came with the telescope is and then you can put a red dot finder on one side and on the other side you can put a magnifying finder scope i personally like your correct image but you can you don't have to if you don't like that you can put any but you want something that's uh, 8 by 50 or 9 by 50 to help you hone in when you're trying to locate objects so I consider this upgrade essential. The next upgrade I want to talk about is not essential. It's just nice to have that you might consider is adding a cooling fan to the mirror because Dobsonians are very long and the mirror is at the end of the telescope. They can take a while to cool down and if you live in a hot area like this lady did she lives in san jose and it gets very hot there in the summertime so she added this cooling fan to cool the mirror down before you observe it runs off of a cable that plugs into the cooling fan and then has a battery pack of i think eight d cell batteries that runs it I have never owned one, I've never used it. Uh, it's very cold in Montana and it's very cold where I observe here in California and I'm okay with how long it takes for it to cool down. But if that is a problem for you, maybe you keep it in a warm house or a heated garage and then you take it outside and it, it'll take you know 30 minutes to cool down, you might consider a cooling fan. I don't know who made this one. I think it's Apertura, but many companies make them and they range from 12 to $24. And if this is an Apertura, it was $24. So something to consider to speed up the cooling down process before you observe. Another upgrade you might consider is nice to have, not essential, would be to add encoders to your telescope this is an Orion and telescope and it came with encoders that you put on the telescope and then you plug in this hand controller and you level the base precisely and once you've precisely leveled it you point it to the zenith and then you locate two stars and then the hand controller has a database of I think 42,000 objects and then you punch in the one you want to see and it'll give you coordinates and then you push the telescope until those coordinates go down to zero zero and then the object would be in the telescope very nice <laughs> thing to have on your dobsonian but personally i only used it a few times because it took so long to level it it was easier for me to just locate the object but if you're having trouble locating objects with your dobsonian you can add encoders to the dobsonian GSO makes encoders for Dobsonians and you can even add encoders and set in circles and you can make your telescope a go-to Dobsonian but definitely falls into the nice to have category. One other upgrade is that all Dobsonian telescopes have to be collimated from time to time and some of them require tools so one upgrade that wasn't done to this telescope is that you can replace the places that have screws with knobs so that you don't need tools this telescope the secondary mirror is adjusted using a phillips head screwdriver but once you collimate the secondary mirror on your dobsonian unless you really abuse it or drop it you never have to touch the secondary ever again it's almost always the primary mirror that needs to be adjusted and on this telescope the primary mirror is adjusted with knobs that don't require a tool so 
that is an upgrade that is just a preference, not at all essential and not anything I would really bother with, but you might consider it. One other upgrade that I consider essential is that I've said it before, your telescope can last a lifetime if you take care of it. And part of taking care of it is keeping dust off of it. And I don't mean just by putting this dust cover on, which is of course necessary. Even if you put your dust cover on it, this thing can still get spiders and spider webs in it. <laughs> and so this woman sold her telescope with this very nice Orion padded case. Still has the tag on it. So it's kind of like a vintage since they're out of business, but it's for transporting it. You could keep it in this padded case and that would keep dust off of it and you zip it up, but I'd have to take the tail rat off and probably the finder scope and I don't like doing that because they're well lined up at the moment. So instead, if you plan to keep your telescope upright in your house or your garage, definitely get one of these dust covers. This one is made by Telegizmo, and this one is all weather. It's very sturdy and very nice, but you can get the thinner ones that reflect the sunlight. So if you're gonna take it to a star party and leave it out during the day, it'll reflect the sunlight, but it will keep the dust off of it. I consider that essential. Take care of your telescope. It'll last you forever, but you don't want cobwebs and dust to get inside of it. So definitely get a dust cover to cover your entire telescope. You can also get little ones that go over the top and over the bottom. Those work equally well, but keep those cobwebs and dust out of your telescope so that it'll be well maintained. Now, before I go, I want to tell you one thing that really attracted me to this telescope and something to think about if you're thinking about buying a used telescope is that anyone that went to the trouble to upgrade it like this with this focuser, very nice moonlight dual speed focuser and put the tail rad on there and the cooling fan, that's somebody who really took care of her telescope. So you know it's going to be in good shape. So just something to think about if you're thinking about buying a used telescope. And now let me tell you what she sold me with this telescope that I found irresistible. She sold it with this very nice, very well padded, well organized case. And inside the case were a Teleview two time Barlow, many filters. Uh, three of them were for looking at the moon. She must have really liked looking at the moon. But two of them you cannot find anymore. One of them is a Lumicon O3 filter. Lumicon went out of business and this is quite the find. And an Orion Ultra Block, which is a UHC filter, which you cannot find anymore either. It's one of the best UHC filters, I think, that you can get. And best of all, it came with this Teleview two inch, 27 millimeter panoptic eyepiece. I don't know, I didn't look it up, but I think this alone cost $300 Wow, you never know what you're going to find when you go looking for a used telescope. So that's it for now. I hope you found this useful. I'll see you in the next one. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.